First, I'm gonna draw a rectangle, and this is just gonna be the size of the plywood sheet I've got laying around. This is what I'm gonna be using for the waste board. So this is 270 by 360 mil. And now to find the first point of the hole for the waste board, I'm just gonna create an offset here, a construction line, and I'm just gonna offset it by 18 mil. And then I will get the point of where I can put my first hole. So that top left corner is where I want the center of the first hole to be. And I've measured the threaded insert and usually with the manufacturers you get the recommended hole size for the threaded inserts. Mine's 8.8, .8, so I'm gonna go with that. And now it's time to extrude this sketch. And I'm just gonna extrude it to the height of the plywood sheet. Okay, so now it's time to add the recess for the lip of the threaded insert, because obviously I want it to be flush with the plywood sheet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a circle. I've measured it and I'm gonna go with 11.9 mil and then I'm just gonna extrude it down to 1.25 and this should give me enough clearance so that then it's just below flush so it's not interfering with the, with the height of the wasteboard. Okay, so now it's time to create a rectangular pattern. So I'm gonna select the faces that I want to copy in the pattern and then I'm gonna select the directions and I'm just gonna pull this out and I want five on the short edge and I want six on the long edge. And you can see this is a really quick and easy way of duplicating a design. And what's more is that it's editable, you know, you can go back and change it at any point and it will all update. So there we go, that's the design done. Now it's time to go into the manufacturer. First thing you wanna do is we wanna set up the job. So I'm gonna set up the orientation and also the stock point. So for the orientation, I want the Y axis to actually be on the long edge here of the model. So I'm gonna select the Z axis and the Y axis. The Z axis is right. The Y axis, I'm just gonna choose the long edge. And then you'll see that now the Z axis and the Y axis are on the right lines. And for the stock point, I'm just gonna go with the bottom left corner. That's where I always put it. So that looks good. Now it's time to go into the stock tab. And I don't wanna offset the, the stock by any amount. So I'm gonna put that to zero. And now it's time to actually add the drilling operation. So I'm gonna go over 2D pocket for the inner holes. And I'm gonna select my two flute straight bit. Speeds and feeds, I'm still new to this, but I'm just going with 18,000 RPM and I'm going with a cutting feed rate of 1500 millimeters per minute. Anywhere between 1000 and 2000 seems to do the job okay from what I've been testing so far. Now it's time to select the geometry. So I'm just gonna flip this over. I'm gonna select the uh, bottom contours. So it's telling it to drill all the way through to that bottom contour there. I'm gonna do it in multiple depths. I don't just wanna plunge straight in. I'm gonna go with a three mil maximum roughing step down. And I don't wanna leave any stock. And we'll just let that generate the toolpath. And there you can see, so it's all been generated. Now it's time to go with the last operation, which is gonna be 2D adaptive clearing. And for this, I'm just gonna be selecting the same bit, same speeds and feeds, and I'm just selecting that lip there. And we'll just generate it. And then it's time to simulate it, make sure that it's all looking good. So you can see here, this is the simulate function, allows you to see what the job is actually gonna do and allows you to see if there's gonna be any problems. You can speed up the preview. And I've just noticed here that actually the 2D adaptive isn't clearing everything. Now I'm guessing that this is probably because I, I didn't untick stock to leave. So that's just a really good example there of why simulating the job is always a good idea because it just shows you things that you might have missed. So if we go to the passes, yeah, so there you can see that stock to leave is, is ticked on. So I'm gonna untick that. It's now not gonna leave any stock and it should just cut it to what I want it to be. Let's do one last simulation just to make sure this 2D adaptive is clearing everything and yes it is, that's good. Okay, now it's time to export the G-code 
and I'm just going to save it as whatever I want. Um, my output is going to be for Mac free because that's what I'm using. Obviously, whatever you're using is you know what you should be selecting there. Call it whatever you want and then click on post. And now let's take it over to the CNC. I'm just fixing the plywood to the base and I've just got a little corner jig that I 3D printed here just to find that zero point and that is the stock point in Fusion 360. I actually put my plywood sheet in the wrong position. My y-axis doesn't actually go uh, back enough so I actually had to move it a little bit forward and then re-zero it but you can see it does a good job of finding that zero corner which is really important. So now I'm just going to do uh, one hole and I'm just going to test it. So this is that 2D pocket. You can see that it's doing it in multiple depths, just coming in and out and gradually working its way through the sheet. And then we're going to be doing that 2D adaptive clear. And that's it. It's a very, very simple cut. So I'm just going to pause it here and I just wanted to make sure that my uh, measurements were correct and you can see it's just sitting below flush there which is exactly what I wanted so now I know that it works I can just go ahead and resume the cut uh, this is actually different from the one that I modeled uh, this is actually got five by four holes um, I'm going to be cutting a few of these so I've just been testing different sizes and stuff like that but it's exactly the same in terms of its actual design and now I'm just putting in the threaded inserts. You want to make sure that when you are actually putting it on the CNC, you're actually flipping it over so that the, the lips are actually at the bottom because then that way you've got uh, more grip against that plywood because if you do it the other way, you might actually rip them out when you are tightening stuff up. I've just 3D printed some uh, clamps here, got some M6 bolts and just tighten them up. And it actually does a really good job of holding this in place. It, I wouldn't recommend it for probably something like metal, um, but for, for wood, it's, it does a pretty good job, as you can see here, just doing some test engraving. I would not use something like this on metal, as you can see here. I was trying to clamp down a little aluminium sheet, and I was going to do some cutting it just doesn't clamp it down tight enough. Now I've modified these clamps to have a slight recess in them so that then they can really kind of clamp onto the edges of the aluminium sheet. And that seems to do the job okay, but these ones that I printed off uh, from Thingiverse, they're really only good for wood. So <laughs> I've been making a few mistakes in the last few weeks, but it's all just a learning process. So I thought I would share that with you. If you've got any questions, um, if you've got any other ideas for beginner projects, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm still trying to get my head around all of this CNC and CAM stuff. But that is it today. Hopefully that's been of some use to you. Any questions, as always, put it in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all later.